Hello everyone and welcome to my video. Today I'm in my car. Yes, I'm drinking wine. No, I'm not driving anywhere. I'm sitting on my driveway, so calm down. I don't even have a case with me, so uh, it's all good. I'm sitting here with my laptop and I'm gonna do a commentary on uh, the video that I'm about to show you, which actually gonna be a detailed explanation of what did I do to my car and how did I do it and would I ever recommend anybody else doing that. So let's just, you know, dive right into it. First thing first is I painted my entire car. Yes, I did that in my garage by myself with the help of my dad. Uh, the only reason I actually even needed his help and I would recommend somebody doing something similar to have at least one person to help you with is the cable management for uh, painting equipment. You will see that from my video, you will understand what exactly what I mean, but uh, um, technically you could do it alone, you could do it by yourself. Actually, I have done it on my wife's car, on the Honda CRV. I painted again the entire car absolutely by myself. And that's when I kind of learned that it would be really beneficial to have a second person who can hold that, you know, cable behind you or, you know, just away from a car so it doesn't touch the car while the paint is still wet and stuff. So it's just way more comfortable. But point still stays that you can make this uh, happen by yourself in your garage for extremely low price. For me, this was one of the main reasons. Um, there is a, a, obviously an option to wrap your car. If you can do it by yourself, my hats are off to you. It's great. I tried it myself. Uh, I, I'm not very good at it. Maybe it was a wrong wrap. Maybe it was just the wrong conditions because Florida is very hot and the wrap is very stretchy and sticky when it's hot. Maybe because of that. And obviously I don't have a proper room to do that. A uh, cooled uh, room. Maybe. However, for me personally, I, I could not do the wrap myself. And the wrapping professionally in my car would cost, you know, four to five thousand dollars, even at the places that I'm not really sure that reputable about it. So uh, it's way too much money, in my opinion, for something that's not really worth it. This is not gonna add value to a car. This is not gonna, you know, make a car better. It's just you, you're gonna make it personalized, but that's pretty much it. Um, and yeah, you're gonna protect your paint a little bit. This plastic dip protect your paint and you can, uh, you know, paint it any color you like pretty much, which is exactly what I did. The color is extremely unique. Um, I had never seen anything like this. I guess you can call it Tiffany blue. Uh, but the main point is accessibility for me. The all in all price for that thing, I will reveal later in the video uh, at the end, but just let me tell you, it's a tiny fraction of what you would expect to pay for a professional wrap. So with this said, Let's just begin watching the video and I'm going to be talking with you step by step what is going on, what you need to avoid, what's the kind of things to pay attention to and you know things of that such. And the video is going to be a while so grab a glass of wine, cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever you feel like, maybe glass of water and let's just uh, enjoy the video together. Let's go! Okay, first thing first, I cannot stress out enough the importance of masking you know, covering with the tape or plastic, whatever you can use. There is no right or wrong answer, you know, what to use. You can even use newspapers if you want to stay like really low budget. It's going to be pain in the neck, but you can do it. Uh, I use the, uh, you know, professionally kind of made like plastic, uh, the wrap and t tape and uh, drape, I believe it's called. Anyway, you don't have to buy it. This is just going to make it a little bit simpler and, uh, you know, just a little bit easier because it's not extremely easy process. So it's one thing I decided to take off the list because masking is extremely important. So I decided to make it a little bit less hideous. Therefore, I went for this option. So you have to make sure everything that you don't want to paint covered very, very neatly. This is the key. Obviously, everybody will say like, duh, you need to mask it. That's not my point. My point is your angles, your like corners, your lines has to be extremely precise. They have to be very straight because that will be practically impossible to fix later on. So with that said, the first thing you see in my video is uh, my car uh, in original, you know, uh, deep blue color and uh, it's already masked. I cannot really teach you how to mask. Just take your time. It's going to take you a while. For me, it took probably a couple hours, if not more. Um, and this is the first run of the paint. First run of the, the paint, you only do dusting. 
first yeah obviously like i just did on my wheel just try you know your spray gun that it works correctly and then just do some light dusting you can see that i'm staying a little bit further away from an actual car and again don't don't take my word you know as a, this is the right way to do it this is my way to do it if you disagree with this or you're professional you know better good luck i mean you're probably right however this is how i done it so in the first few coats i would say about four to five coats i stay a little bit further i keep the gun a little bit further from a car to make it a little bit more of a dust in effect rather than a wet coat the closer you get the more thicker the paint is gonna get the more thicker and shinier the layer is gonna be and the first layers it's important to get the dusting sort of like coverage for entire car don't worry about spots you can see that there is like a very obvious like oh you miss this spot you miss that spot it doesn't matter believe me it doesn't matter in total we're gonna make a lot of coats on this car so this is just a very beginning this is very first take so I'm doing some dusting here and there just making sure overall coverage is okay and here you can see that the the role of a second person the pulling that large cable uh, from a compressor away from a car because as you walk around the car the cable inevitably gonna try to tangle and touch the bumper or fender or you know it's gonna be on your way so that's where the second person comes really as a huge help and uh, as you can see, I'm just continuing this dusting work. It's gonna and it's gonna be a while, so um, I'm not gonna speed this up. Not because I'm lazy, but simply because I was struggling uh, when I was doing this to find a video that actually shows me very detailed steps. Not just talked about it, but show me how to do it. I'm a very visual person, therefore I, I thought it's very important to actually present the exact way how I done it. So obviously, I'm taking one uh, body panel at the time don't you know just jump from you know door to the hood and back and forth just find some sort of like system that works for you and just follow it you know all around the car don't do multiple coats at once on a single uh, panel so do one like I'm doing the, the hood right now it looks horrendous I know but keep in mind this is just a dusting coat but do one coat and if as soon as you you think you're done move on do not do a second layer for the places where you already covered with the paint. You, you should not do that, not with this paint. I don't know how it works with other paints. This paint is very specific. It's a, a Plasti Dip, so it's a latex, basically, you know, rubber-based uh, paint. So it, it works in a little bit unique ways. Um, so do a little bit dusting. Again, you see the, um, I have uh, turn signals. Honestly, I recommend removing them. I did not remove them, not because I was lazy, but uh, I was really afraid that I'm gonna break one of the uh, clips that was holding it. Uh, I was really struggling. I was I removed a couple clips, but there's like three or four holding it on, and I just could not remove the last one. And I felt like it would absolutely mean that I'm gonna break it, so I decided like, nah, I'm just gonna carefully mask it and leave it alone. I removed the, uh, uh, the mirrors, mirror cups. I paint them separately again I, I simplified the masking process because it's a very important and kind of difficult you don't realize how difficult that process is because it takes precision uh, so I just removed it to take it kind of easier and wrap the rest of the mirrors you know with, with the plastic uh, and here I'm continuing dusting also as you can uh, notice my door handles remain open for the whole duration of me working in the car which took me probably all together from start to finish of actual painting about uh, five hours so and I, I wanted to door handles to be uh, open because I wanted to paint inside of them as well I actually reversed that decision later on uh, I peeled them off I decided that the gloss uh, black looks a little bit better than a single color all around just because it gives a little bit a deeper accent I guess um, again do as you wish this is the the way I decided to go and uh, I so far I'm very happy with this but in the, in my particular video this is why you see in it with the open door handles because I wanted to cover all like inside the door handle on the sides of it even in the bottom there's I know there's a light uh, on the bottom of the door handle but it's very easy to peel off remove that um, uh, excess paint so don't worry about it the very important rule with the plastic dip as long as it's a separate item, as long as this whatever, like let's say door handle, as long as it's 
physically does not touch the other panel, let's say the door. As you can see, there's a very clear like a gap around it. You can peel it off easily without damaging anything else. And, and it spills off very easy. So don't worry about that. If you accidentally paint over something that's again, standalone item, uh, like the, uh, for example, the batch, like a Tesla batch or whatever car you're gonna paint, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can peel it off extremely easy. Don't worry about it. Uh, so if it's too hideous to mask, like an emblem, which I think in my opinion, it is extremely hideous to mask, uh, I would just leave it. Leave it and then you can peel it off. So don't worry about that. Uh, extremely important part as well, if your car is equipped with uh, some sort of adjustable suspension, make it as high as you can before you start working so you can access your side skirts, so you can access all your, you know, the lower points uh, of a car. This is very important. Even I set my car to the highest and it was still difficult. Now, the front bumper. Front bumper, in my opinion, is extremely difficult to work on when it's on the actual car. Therefore, I made the very critical decision from beginning that I will have to remove it and paint it separately. If you have to mask everything that's inside the bumper, around the bumper, underneath the bumper, on top of the bumper, you're just gonna go crazy. It, it, it's gonna take you so many hours of very, very, very hideous work. You're gonna hate this process. I decided, you know what, I would rather take 30 minutes, remove the bumper, remove all the components from it and just paint it separately. And that way I can assure that the coverage will be very nice. Because think about it, bumper and your hood is like probably the places where you want the best coverage because that's where you're, you're gonna see the most rock chips, all you know, little scuffs from the road, even bugs and stuff. You want a good coverage everywhere from different angle. And uh, paint guns don't really work upside down. So if you have a weird angle on the bumper, which installed in the car, and you have to bend like, you know, upside down or something, your paint gun simply not gonna work. So you're gonna be in a very, very tricky situation there. I highly recommend if you can remove such a big part as a bumper, do it. If you don't, it's gonna be difficult, but not impossible. Many people done it, so it's okay. Don't don't feel scared or discouraged. You, you still can do it. It's just gonna be a little bit more difficult, so make sure you take your time. This is the most important. All right, we proceed into the rest of the body panels. You see that I'm still doing the dusting. Don't rush the process. At the very end, it took me 14 layers. 14 layers, okay? So just keep that in mind. So don't try to do the first round, you know, dusting and then the second try to do a wet, you know, uh, proper coverage that to make sure there is no spots of your original paint. Don't do that. Huge mistake. You're gonna overload on some spots. It's gonna be very difficult to notice. It's gonna be very difficult for you to do an even, you know, layer of a paint throughout the car. Don't do that. So I'm still doing mainly dusting. It's starting to look better, but it's still kind of patchy, which is okay. The bottom panels, as you can see, this is where I'm struggling. This is what I was telling you about, that it's kind of really important for you to raise the car as much as you can. That will be extremely beneficial for you later on um, at the process. Also tricky spot underneath the mirrors, because it's kind of so close to that plastic that you wrap. It's like right there. So you have to kind of point the gun at a very particular degree and kind of close. So it's really hard to do a dusting, but you, you kind of have to like find the right angle. So make sure when you are masking the car, you kind of like look at it and make sure it is enough space for you to come there with a gun at the proper angle so you can actually cover the area under the mirror. Different cars, different design, but on my car, that was kind of a difficult spot for me. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I, I left uh, my uh, uh, passenger door a little bit open so that my uh, uh, door handles don't close. So my car is just stands with the open door handles. Uh, I made sure it's charged and everything. This is not gonna kill the charge, but still. Um, so I'm continuing with this uh, all around the edges. The edges are very important. Keep in mind that especially on the roof, when you're painting roughly at 45 degrees, you look in one way. However, this uh, the this pillar, you spray this way. But if somebody looks at it from a passenger side, 
they're gonna see it from this way which means you actually might have a spots there where you have not painted it so it is very important to make sure you cover this and obviously you don't have a, a arms long enough to reach out over the roof of the car to do that so just it's, it's gonna be awkward but you know bend your arm like kind of point almost at yourself and go like this you know towards from the opposite side to cover the pillar from inside from like where the roof is it's very important I've seen quite a few uh, people uh, missing that and it's very obvious and guess what later on you can't really do anything about it so you just kind of have to live with that or or I mean you can start the whole thing again which I would hate to do so just that's why I'm saying take your time make sure you understand the process before you start in the process all right here's uh, we go into that pillar like I was saying yeah you, so you see the angle just like I was saying it doesn't cover the angle from inside don't worry I will work on this later but I just thought it's important to mention that you know this is a tricky spot um, that people miss uh, quite occasionally yeah and that uh, kind of triangle where the hood the fender and the pillar meets it's also kind of like from inside so make sure you cover that because if you sit up as a driver you actually might be able to see that corner and it's gonna look very ugly if it's not painted it's gonna be very noticeable also worth noting that uh, this color is originally uh, it's advertised that you're supposed to use narda gray as a, a base color and then on top of it to use this uh, for the best kind of like color accuracy um, I did not go for it for a simple reason uh, a I already experienced the uh, paint in another car and I think it's not necessary honestly I just don't I probably I speak like a such a noob and beginner but I just don't think it's necessary second I was totally okay with my car being darker than dark uh, uh, than the gray uh, Narda gray therefore giving my overall color a little bit deeper and darker feel overall I was okay with that so if you're okay with that I would say skip the base color and just go with whatever color you actually want to paint your car but I, again it's a very uneducated suggestion this is how I done it I'm happy with results therefore I'm sharing it with you but by books that's not the way how you're supposed to do it um, the way you're supposed to be painting like right now I'm showing on the door obviously do left to right you know try to keep the same distance from a body panel to the gun don't don't go too far don't go too close keep the same distance the further you are away the um, more matte satin and a little bit of like you know texture you're gonna have on the paint which is perfectly okay when you do dusting however when you do a later coat when you want a little bit shinier unified like a smoother finish you want to do a little bit closer up to the car which which will require require a little bit more precision the wet paint is is tricky especially on a side panels because it's gonna be leaking if you put too much it's gonna be leaking immediately and I don't know what you can do there so be careful that's rule number one rule number two don't ever spray while stationary you have to keep going regard I don't care which part of the uh, panel you're painting you have to keep going left right constantly doing this this movement if you stop for a second while the gun is running I can promise you after one second you're gonna have a running uh, running paint spot so avoid it at all costs left right uh, uh, swift movement and uh, um, another like third rule I guess is try to keep a uh, 50% coverage from your previous layer and let me explain you what I mean by this so your line of paint let's say it's let's say it's five six inches right so this is you went with the line like this now your next line of paint ideally it's hard to it's hard to do it in in real life but it's easy to say it in theory so I'm just sharing the way it's supposed to be I don't know if I'm done it properly probably I did a lot of mistakes it doesn't really matter I'm not a professional so it's okay but ideally you would want to do the one line and then the second line you do 50% coverage so at the middle of there you where your previous line uh, was you doing the 50% coverage of that 
Next line, you're doing again at 50% coverage of that line. And this is how you go down by 50%, not by entire new line, but by half line. I hope that makes sense. Uh, hopefully you can see that from my video that I try to do that, especially with the wetter uh, coats. I try to do a little bit, you know, more even 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%. Again, it's 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 a very long process. It takes you know four or five hours, depending how fast you are, depending how experienced you are. But your arm will get tired. You will get tired. You will get fatigued. You will just get you know maybe bored again. I don't know. It's 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 stressful to constantly pay this you know attention. So you will make some mistakes. Don't worry about it. You will see in my video. I'm not doing it by any means perfect or even that great, but it worked. So. Don't be afraid, it's okay. If you don't follow the book 100%, you can still do it. As you can see, right now I'm doing a little bit wetter uh, coats and it's starting to look shinier, it's starting to look way more unified and you don't see the lines anymore. This is one thing you really want to avoid when, whenever you paint in the larger panels, is the, uh, the lines. Because uh, a lot of times uh, when people especially don't do those 50% lines, you can see like an actual lines around the uh, whatever panel. The hood, I would probably say, is the most difficult because it's hard to reach, especially in the middle. And people would just, you know, just spray it like that and go on. It, it's really important not to do that. I'm not saying that I did perfectly, but try your best to stay very consistent, especially towards the end when you're doing a wet coats. It's very important. Um, as you can see, I'm continuing the, already starting with the wet coats. Uh, it's starting to look way better, way better. Um, yeah, you see underneath, I'm working under the car. It's not under, but you know what I mean, like on the bottom up. So if you can raise your suspension, if it's adjustable, I highly recommend this. Not must have, but I highly recommend this. All right, and further we go, I'm starting to already doing slowly wetter coats. Each, each next coat starting to get wetter and wetter and therefore more unified and uh, you know the color starts to actually blend in and starting to look like a you know finished product which is exactly what we want so there I'm continuing to work in again under make sure that none of this masking actually touching anything that you need to paint I, I know it sounds like extremely basic uh, rule but Believe me, it's actually not that uh, easy to, you know, just forget and skip because there's a lot of masking needs to be done in one spot that's going to be touching the paint and when you're going to be peeling off, guess what, you'll ruin the whole paint. And again, it's latex based paint, so it will peel off as a whole entire piece. One little tiny corner, you'll start peeling off, you can peel off entire door. And I'm not even exaggerating. This is actually also why it is very important to put so many layers like I have done simply because this will assure that when you're done with this color you say like you know what I'm bored I'm ready to do something different or I just want to return to a factory you're not damaging your paint whatsoever so don't worry this actually serves as a very good protection for your paint so don't worry at all so when it comes time if you did multiple good layers if you did good coverage you can easily peel it off very 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 easy as a single piece extremely simple there is nothing actually i need to tell you about it it's just literally just start from a corner peel one little piece and just pull you're done however if you just done the whole car by like dusting type of deal and you haven't done like a good solid wet coat on top uh, multiple ones as soon as you start peeling off, it's going to be chipping off into multiple little pieces. And that's, you still can remove it, don't worry. You're not going to ruin again your paint or your car or anything like this. You can remove it, but that's going to be very annoying. Here, as you can see, uh, what happened to me, my gun died off. I actually do not recommend uh, uh, DYC, uh, DPO car uh, company uh, gun. Uh, I bought mine originally quite a long time ago with a compressor. It costed me $400 and honestly, I do not recommend this. This replacement uh, that you're seeing right now, I bought at uh, just any your convenient uh, hardware store for, wait for it, $100. And it does not require a compressor, it's kind of have a compressor of its own. And honestly, it's plenty of power. It's plenty of power. 
uh, don't listen to anybody that you need like some very crazy professional equipment that has to be expensive forget about it it's absolutely lies here you can see i actually in my opinion this particular paint gun with this included the uh, compressor worked better than my 400 dollar professional uh gun with a compressor i i would not recommend to anybody that unfortunately so this is already day two so on a day one uh i had to stop because my gun kind of died on me it just stopped working for whatever reason i can't really even explain to you uh and uh I had to buy a new gun because well what options do I have if I if I had to buy an original gun I would have to wait for like a couple of weeks probably for it to be delivered so that's not really an option I need the car so I just went to a hardware store I bought this gun and uh, voila and I'm continuing the job and I'm very happy about the performance of it right now as you can see just pay attention to where the gun is it is much closer to the car compared from the beginning where it was like maybe a foot and a half to now it's much closer and now the very extremely important part maybe even more important than the masking itself is removing the all the covering all the masking and this is where it comes wet and masking that's how i call it at least i don't know if you have some plastic the masking that touches the paint do the new layer and immediately try to remove that plastic this paint reacts with the old one and makes it wet soft and very easily like detachable it's not gonna peel off when it's wet so do the uh, fresh layer whenever it touches and then do the very nice peel off and you you're not gonna have any issues so make sure on any spots where it's either touches the paint or you have suspicion that it might accidentally pull the paint don't worry just do the very quick just little you know like very quick wet uh one go uh right on the edge right on top of it go right above it and immediately start uh, carefully peeling off and it's gonna go very smoothly i can absolutely assure with this and that's it and this is how you're done obviously when i say that's it it's gonna take you a while to remove all that masking very carefully and nicely but uh if you're not gonna be in a rush if you're gonna pay attention to where the paint touches the masking where it doesn't and just do it slowly that's it the result is done and uh, we're done here thank you for watching uh, I appreciate you spending some time with me I hope you found uh, my content uh, helpful entertaining whatever you know I hope you enjoyed it so uh, this is how my car looks right now and uh, I hope to see you soon on my channel thank you very much bye bye